So I have this map and it shows all of the territory ruled by the Egyptians. And it stretches all the way from Alexandria all the way to Kush. And it includes all of the area that we call the Middle East today, Arabia, parts of Asia, even um, Israel, um, all of this territory. So on the back of the map, it gives a detailed description of the first rulers of Egypt. So according to the timeline of white and Jewish scholars, the first kings of Egypt were set up 5,000 years ago. And when they give us this timeline, they completely ignore the 39,000 year kings list that exists in Egypt. But even if we ignore the 39,000 years of kings and we go by the Caucasian and Jewish timeline of 5,000 years, we see that 5,000 years ago, according to them, the first dynasty of Egypt had two principal rulers. The first was Dejer. Dejer's grandfather was Namer, and Dejer had a daughter, and his daughter was married to Dejet. So Dejet was the other principal ruler, and we see that these two rulers ruled alongside each other. And this means that Dejer was Dejet's father in law and the King Den that fought the cave beast in 3100 BC, what the Bible calls Dan, Den was Dejet's son and Dejer's grandson. So 5,000 years ago, there were two principal rulers, Dejer, who was a Cushite, and Dejet, who was from America. And if we look at Dejet, Dejet in his name, he has the Wajet symbol. This tells us who he is, and he is called the Serpent King. So 5,000 years ago, Egypt had two rulers, one a Cushite and the other an Egyptian Serpent King, with the name Dejet, representing the Wajet symbol from the land of Weret, which is America. This means that the Serpent Kings in America 8,000 years ago went to Africa, not the other way around. So the serpent kings of South America and all of the serpent mounds found in North America all predate the first serpent king of Egypt 5,000 years ago because the first serpent king, Dejet, was from the Americas. And this is why we have 3,000-year-old Egyptian mummies with cocaine in their system, cocaine that can only be found in South America. And this is why Maya, the Mayan, who was an Egyptian also, was buried in Egypt because they all came from the Americas, or the land of Weret, the land of the Wajet symbol, the symbol of the snake. So I want to explain the Egyptian headdresses and crowns worn by the Egyptians because their headdresses show us who the serpent kings were. But before I do that, I want to show you some of the more ancient structures that can be found within the United States. So I've talked about the Grand Canyon and the presence of the Egyptians in the Grand Canyon. But according to Wikipedia, there are six canyons in North America and they are all filled with ancient structures that are clearly older than the ones found in Egypt and I'll leave a list of the canyons a complete list because although Wikipedia says there are six canyons in North America there are actually well over 60 of them in North America so I'll leave a complete list in the description box so if you look at these structures that can be found in North America and you compare them to the ones found in Asia you'll see that they're very similar and the reason I mention Asia and the structures in Asia is because Asia is in fact connected to North America so it's still connected to this day by the Bering Land Bridge even though the bridge itself is submerged underwater 
the two land masses are still connected. And it made me wonder if the serpent people were all over North America and all over South America and Egypt, then I wondered if I could find the presence of the serpent kings in Asia as well. So since I've already placed the serpent kings in South America, North America, and in Africa as well, the only place left is Asia. So the ancient people of Asia were known as the Nagas. The word Nag means cobra, and the Naga people were the serpent kings of Asia. Here we have the original Nagas 150 years ago, and the fake Nagas today to the left. There are countless artifacts of the Nagas in Asia. In Hinduism and Buddhism, the Nagas were half-human, half-snake people with superhuman powers. But this is just their mythological way of describing the powers of the Naga people. More importantly, the Naga people of Asia, the Mayan serpent kings, and the first serpent kings of Egypt are all the same people. So here's an interesting artifact I want to show you. So this artifact is very important because it shows us the connection between the Nagas of Asia and the Mayans of South America. So if we look closely, this is a Naga or a seven-headed Naga with a lion. And if you look at the chest of the Naga or the Cobra, you'll see that on the chest of the Cobra is a calendar. Now this calendar looks almost exactly like the Mayan long count calendar that is found in South America. And I just want to show you the distance between Cambodia and Mexico and it's 9,000 miles away. So I just want to show you the distance between the two and the similarities in their calendars and the artifacts that have been found in Asia and in South America and in North America. And we know the very same serpent kings were also in Africa. They were the kings of Egypt. So this places the serpent kings who were known as the Mayans or the Egyptians or the Nagas or by many different names. But this places these serpent rulers in every area of the earth. So I want to explain also that the wedget or the cobra or the Naga symbol, the symbol of the cobra that was represented by the serpent kings has nothing to do with the apep snake. So the apep snake that is shown here is the enemy of Ra, and this is a cosmic enemy. Okay, so the sometimes uh, a few of the mounds in North America do have the apep snake and not the cobra. This is because the mounds represent the cosmic side of this. Okay, so um, I just wanted to clarify that the apep snake has nothing to do with the cobra. And here we have the apep snake to the left. And to the right, we have the two cobras, which were also known in ancient times in ancient Egypt, the two ladies. So the wedget symbol or the cobra is a representation of Heka or magic. And Heka is a representation of the powers of the god Ra. And the Heka or the power of the cobra represents all of the elements or the powers of Ra equals all of the elements of the earth. And true Egyptian magic involved alchemy and cosmology. And they were masters of all of the elements, all of the powers of Ra, all of the powers of all of the creations of Ra. Even the first white Greek and Romans in ancient times, when they created their god Zeus, Zeus is the equivalent to the god Ra of the Egyptians. And when they created their god Zeus, you can see the earliest images of Zeus is shown as a snake. Just like the Egyptians would show the power of Ra as the cobra or the wedget symbol. So now I want to talk about the crowns and the headdresses worn by the Egyptian kings. The two most important crowns worn were the Horus crown, 
or the bird, and the wadget crown or the cobra. And the horse bird or the horse crown was worn by Cushites. And the wadget crown was worn by the serpent kings. So we can look at the Egyptians who wore the serpent crown um, or the serpent kings of Africa and virtually the majority of the whole Armana dynasty, Akhenaten, his wife, his daughters, his son, uh, Tutankhamun, um, they all wore the Wajet crown or the Wajet headdress. And even the III, who is your biblical king David, wore the Wajet crown. So we can see here the bird and the snake sitting on top of two halves of the world. We have the bird ruling one half of the world and the serpent ruling the other half, or the bird kings and the serpent kings. So if we look at the eye of Horus, we see the bird and the snake, and they're both wearing the older crowns of Egypt. So if we look at Ramses to the bottom right, he's wearing the Wajet crown only, or the serpent crown only. And I've explained that Ramses and Maya were brothers, and this means Ramses, like Maya, was from South America, or the land of Waret. And he wears the Wadjet crown for the serpent kings. So if we look at Tutankhamun to the bottom left, we see that he has the horse bird and the Wadjet symbol on his crown, meaning that he is the lord of both lands. He is the king of both lands, meaning that he ruled the whole world. So in the beginning, it was the serpent kings who ruled the whole world. These serpent kings were known as the Mayans, the Nagas, the Egyptians, and by various different titles, but they ruled Asia, Africa, and the Americas. And here you can see the serpent kings represented as ruling both sides of the world, and this is shown as the snake ruling both sides. Again, we see in the ancient Egyptian magicians using two scepters and both scepters are ruled by the snake. Here we see the cobras ruling both sides of the world. This is one of Tutankhamun's half-sisters and you can see she's wearing the serpent crown. This is Amenhotep III who is your biblical king Solomon and he wore the serpent crown. This is Ramses who wore the serpent crown or the Wajet crown and this is Akhenaten and the Mayans, just like the Egyptians, wore the serpent crown or were known as the serpent kings. So if we look at the parents of Akhenaten, we see that his father Amenhotep III was a serpent king and his mother, Queen Taiyi, was a Kushite. And here we have a bilingual codex called the Salazar Brick and it was created by the Mayans who were Egyptians and the Almecs who were Kushites. So we can see the ancient connection between the black and brown races of the Americas. And this all goes back to the ancient text of the Mayans called the Popo Vu. The Popo Vu describes the battle between the two brothers and their struggle. This is the same exact story that we can find in the story of Osiris and Set, the two brothers who battle each other. So historians will tell you that the Popo Vu represents the two brothers who are battling each other in a ball game. But the balls actually represent the world. And their battle is a struggle for power and kingship of the earth. So the tale of the Popo Vu and myth of Osiris and Set is really the ancient account of the battles between the two original races of the earth, the black and brown races. And the original rulers of the earth were the people that we know as the Egyptians or the serpent kings. And it wasn't until after the flood as the Kushites themselves recorded and as it's recorded in the Bible that after the flood, the Kushites, as the Bible calls it, Nimrod leaves the land of Cush and he begins to invade all of the Egyptian territory. 
and before the flood the Egyptians ruled the whole earth and the battles that have taken place for the past thousands of years have been going on between the black and brown races and if we look at the beginning the first king of Egypt we see that the first dynasty of Egypt had a serpent ruler who ruled the whole earth more importantly if we look at the serpent kings or the Nagas of Asia and the serpent kings of Africa known as the Egyptians and if we look at the Mayans or the serpent kings of South America and all of the serpent mounds and all of the ancient structures that can be found in the many canyons in North America. And if we look at things like Maya, who was a Mayan from South America, yet he was buried in Egypt and restored the temple in Egypt. And if we look at the first serpent king, Dejet of Egypt, we can see that the first serpent king of Egypt was 5,000 years ago, yet we know that the serpent kings were in America 8,000 years ago. This means that the first serpent ruler in Egypt 5,000 years ago actually came from South America, the land of Weret. This also explains why white people discovered the existence of America by studying the Egyptian hieroglyphs. Because the Egyptians would have recorded the existence of the Americas in Egypt because they were from the Americas. This is how white people discovered the Americas in the first place. And you have to remember what happened 5,000 years ago in Africa. Because when I say the first serpent kings were 5,000 years ago in Egypt and they left the Americas to go to Egypt, this is true. But you have to remember one important thing. The first serpent kings of Egypt 5,000 years ago who came from South America they were actually in Africa because what we call South America today 5,000 years ago was still part of Africa and it was 5,000 years ago that the Egyptians recorded that the Americas and Africa split in two so in actuality the ancient kings of South America who came to Egypt were actually coming from one part of Africa to another so this concludes part four of the Mayans were Egyptians. I will in the future make a part five. And just to let everyone know in the United States about part two, because I still have people asking me where part two is. Um, YouTube banned part two in the United States. It's still available in the rest of the world, but it is banned from the United States. So when I have time, I will re-upload a new version of part two for the United States.